Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Glenn and this is my channel Taylor Tries where I try new things and I try to teach you new things. And today I'm going to teach you how to do a juggling trick called Burke's Barrage. It looks like this. Real quick, I want to take a second and thank everyone who is a member of my Otter Club on Patreon. It's because of you that I can make these tutorials free for everyone else, and I really appreciate it. If you want to join the Otter Club and support me, it's only $2. It helps me out a lot, and you get access to extended versions of most of my tutorials. In the extended version of this tutorial, I'll teach you how to do some fun stylistic variations with Burke's Barrage. It's only $2, and there's a link in the description. Let's take a look at what's happening in Burke's Barrage. Burke's Barrage is essentially a site swap 423 where the fours are being dragged through the pattern. If you're not familiar with Side Swap, that's totally fine. You don't need to know it in order to learn Burke's Barrage. But if you do want to learn Side Swap, I have a tutorial on it. There is a link in the description on that. Burke's Barrage gets its name from a man named Ken Burke who discovered the trick a little while ago, and that's why it's called Burke's Barrage. I also want to note that Burke's Barrage looks a lot like takeouts, but it is not the same trick. A lot of jugglers do takeouts thinking that they are doing Burke's Barrage. The difference is that takeouts involves dragging the balls on the outside of the pattern, and Burke's Barrage, you drag the balls through the pattern. That's the only difference. It's pretty much the same trick. It just depends on how you're dragging those balls. Here are some tricks I do recommend you know in order to learn Burke's Barrage. The 423, or specifically Columns 423, or the W, and Mill's Mess, because Burke's Barrage feels a lot like that pattern. I also recommend that you know how to do takeouts, because Burke's Barrage and takeouts are really similar. And I think takeouts is the easier trick to learn. I have tutorials on both of those tricks. Make sure you go learn those first and then come back and we can work on Burke's Barrage. So admittedly, I find this trick pretty hard to teach. I've taught it to a lot of students over the years and it seems like everyone has a different method that works best for them. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you three different ways that you can learn Burke's Barrage. Make sure you watch all three of the methods because hopefully one of those will really help you get the trick. The other thing I wanna say is just that this trick is pretty difficult to learn. Once you know how to do this trick, it won't feel that hard, but for a lot of jugglers, it can be a pretty difficult trick to wrap your head around. So just take your time, try all the methods that I talk about in this tutorial, watch the troubleshooting section so that I can help you fix any issues that you're going to have, and be patient, have fun. Right, the first method is for people who feel really comfortable with the trick takeouts, which I mentioned in the prerequisites. As I said, Burke's Barrage is essentially the same thing as takeouts, you're just dragging the ball through the pattern. So what we can do is start with takeouts, and that ball that you're dragging around the top, try just bringing it through the middle instead. That's Burke's Barrage. For some of you, it may be that simple. It's just transitioning from takeouts to Burke's Barrage. Make sure you still check out the troubleshooting section because I do cover some common mistakes that people do without knowing it. But don't worry if that didn't make any sense to you and you still can't do it. We're gonna break it down step by step in method two. All right, in this method, I'm gonna break it down throw by throw. It's the way that I personally learned this trick and I prefer learning tricks. So hopefully this will help some of you. All right, we're just gonna start with two balls, one in each hand. And I want you to cross your arms, very similar to Mill's Mess. We're gonna throw that underhand ball. We're gonna throw it towards the middle of our body, just like in Mill's Mess. We're throwing it to the same hand, okay? But then as we do that, we're going to drag this other hand underneath. So we're here, simple as that. Now step two, we're gonna cross our arms the other way with that other ball on top. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna throw this underhand to the same hand and we're going to bring that ball underneath it. Okay, cross, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Now we're gonna tweak something just a little bit. As we throw this underhand ball and catch it, instead of just catching it like a normal catch, I want you to actually swipe the ball. So it's like you're swiping it across your body. So we're here. And what that's gonna do is set us up on the other side. So instead of catching and then manually crossing our arms, we're going to catch and swipe into that cross. So like that. Now the other side, swipe, swipe. Do that until you can do it pretty comfortably. Next, when we swipe that ball, instead of just swiping it across, I want you to swipe it in a downward motion. And then what's gonna happen is we throw this next ball, we're going to bring that ball up and around. So we're gonna create like a loop. And the timing of that is once we swipe this ball and we come down and we start coming back up, that's when we're gonna throw the next ball up. 
So basically we're going down and then lifting this arm as we're throwing the ball. And at the same time, pulling it back underneath. So. So once you get comfortable with it, it'll go a lot faster. You'll get pretty smooth at that. It's a pretty basic move. Now we can add a third ball. Now, normally I would use three different colored balls to show you what's going on. But in this case, since it's a 4-2-3 pattern, two of these balls are gonna be doing the exact same thing and one is gonna be doing something else. So I'm gonna use two orange ones and one green one. If you understand side swap, the orange ones will be the fours and the green one will be the three. Basically the balls that are being dragged will be the orange balls and the green ball will be the ball going back and forth. So if you also have one different colored ball, I think that can help a lot. Go grab that and let's try to do some color coding. Okay, so we have three balls now. We're gonna have two in one hand, one in the other, because it's juggling. And if you're using color coding, put the odd colored ball in the back of your hand, just like this. Now we're gonna cross our arms, just like we started with the two ball exercise, right? We did this, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the same thing. So we have underhand and that drag underneath it. But this time, instead of just catching that ball, we're gonna throw this other ball. So we drag underneath, and as this ball is coming down, we're gonna throw an outside throw with that odd colored ball. Under, outside, catch. Now we're set up to do it on the other side. We're gonna cross our arms, just like the two ball exercise. Under, outside, catch. Cross, under, outside, catch. Cross, under, outside, catch, cross. Now I should note, if you're using color coding, when you throw that second ball, you wanna catch it in the back of your hand to set up perfectly for the other side. A lot of the time we tend to catch in the top of our hand, which is fine if that's the case, just rotate them so that the colors are correct. But to make that easier on yourself, all you have to do is catch that in the back of your hand to perfectly set up for the other side. So the reason why these colors can help is that that underhand throw is always gonna be this orange ball and the outside throw is always gonna be the green ball. Always. Under, outside, catch, cross, under, outside, catch. See how that green ball is always that outside throw? Do that a few times, get comfortable just going under, outside, catch, cross, under, outside, catch, cross. Now, we wanna start incorporating that swipe that we did with the two ball exercise. So we're gonna cross again, we're gonna start here, we're gonna do our drag underneath and then the outside throw. This time when we catch that first ball, right before we throw the outside ball, I want you to swipe it in that motion like we did with the two ball exercise. One, two. Then you're gonna catch that other ball, the odd colored ball, underneath in the other hand. One, two, here. So it's all in that swipe because that's gonna set you up with your arms crossed and then that ball's coming down and you catch it, okay? One, two, catch. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna do our underhand throw and our drag and then the outside throw. One, two, and we're set up again. One, two, one, two, so you're always dragging that orange ball or whatever color you're using underneath the other orange ball, followed by an outside throw with the odd colored ball. So one, two, catch, one, two, catch. Hopefully that's working for you. Take some time, practice it. Then we can start combining those two sides without stopping. Okay, so we've got one, two, catch. Now instead of just catching this ball, we're gonna start with our one on the other side, that underhand throw, because we always start with the underhand, okay? So under, outside, under, outside. Under, outside, under, outside. Then you just keep going. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Under, outside, under, outside. Under, outside, under, outside. So if you're like me and you like counting, one is always an underhand throw and two is always an outside throw. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Also note that that green ball is the only one going back and forth. The other two are gonna stay in the same hands. The green one is the only one changing hands. 
because it's the three in the four, two, three. Also, I want you to start paying attention to that dip down because that's how we're gonna get the trick to look nice and pretty. So when we swipe, we're going to come down with it. So you're swiping that orange ball slightly down and then back. If that still didn't work for you, there is one more method that sometimes will help people, especially if you're someone who tends to learn better when you morph a trick into a new trick. I'm personally not that kind of learner, but I know a lot of people are. So what we can do is actually learn Berg's Barrage by going from a 4-2-3 pattern into Berg's Barrage. So there's a great 4-2-3 variation where instead of throwing the three like this, we actually throw it over the top and the two fours stay in the middle of the pattern. It's one of my favorite four, two, three variations. If you don't know how to do it, I recommend learning it just because it's really fun. Basically, in this variation, we're throwing that four up in the middle and then the three on the outside over the top of the pattern. So like this. So if you can do that trick, now we can try to morph it into Burke's Barrage. So those two fours in the middle, instead of just catching them like this, you can swipe them, okay? So here, swipe. Right? So as you swipe that, that other one should now come and land in the underhand position. Swipe, and then continue the pattern from there. One, two. So swipe, and then you can just go right back to the pattern if you need to. Swipe. Practice one side if you want, just the left hand, and then maybe try two in a row, left, right, one, two. And eventually you can do it every time. And that's almost Briggs Barrage, we're almost there. We've got that swipe down. Now what we need to do is just drag back. Instead of just pulling our hand out like I was just doing, we wanna swipe that ball and then drag it back underneath the other one. That next orange ball we throw, we wanna come underneath it. Swipe underneath. Swipe underneath. And you can always just go back to the pattern. Swipe, swipe, and eventually try two in a row. and then just keep going. But again, that green ball is going to just pop back and forth just like in that four, two, three variation. And that's Burke's Barrage. Hopefully one of those methods worked for you. If they didn't, just try to figure out which one felt the best for you and keep practicing, keep doing it over and over. You will eventually get the trick. It just takes a little bit of time and it can be especially hard just to wrap your head around what's happening in Burke's Barrage. But if you're still having a hard time with it, or even if you feel like you learned the trick, the next section I'm gonna cover some common mistakes that you might be making or some things that you might be having a hard time with. So troubleshooting. All right, one of the most common problems I see when people are trying to learn Berg's Barrage is that they revert back to Mill's Mess, especially after they swipe this ball here, they'll throw that underhand and then they'll wanna throw this hand back because that's what Mill's Mess does, right? Mill's Mess, we go under, back, but we don't wanna do that in this case. In this case, we want to drag that ball. So I do see a lot of people let that muscle memory kick in and they'll do that, that swipe and then they'll throw back. So just keep in mind, once you swipe and your arms are crossed, you're going to uncross by dragging, not by throwing. It's not Mills Mess, even though it feels a lot like Mills Mess. The other common issue I see with this is that people will drag their hand out of the pattern instead of dragging it through underneath the ball. Really common, it's kind of a bad habit. A lot of people will pull out of the pattern and then kind of stick their hand back underneath to do that underhand throw that just comes from being afraid to go through a pattern. You really have to get comfortable going underneath that ball. If it helps, extend your arm even more to get past that habit because you should be able to go underneath that ball. So if you look at me from the side, See how I'm pulling back? We don't want to do that. The pattern should be in the same plane and you should be going underneath that ball. Like this. Not like this. Okay? Another thing that can help you is to throw those fours a little higher. So when you throw that underhand throw, 
throw it a little higher so that you can see it and actually consciously go underneath it. One, two. Another common problem I see is that people will try to do their drag too late. So they'll basically throw and then drag. We want that drag to be the same time as the throw. If you're throwing and then dragging, you're waiting too long. They need to happen simultaneously. Another common problem I see, especially if you learned with that third method with the four, two, three, is you'll throw that three too far over. So if you find yourself going side to side, it's because you're throwing that outside throw too far outside. That outside throw can be kind of hard because we just threw an underhand throw. So it's one, two. So a lot of people will overcorrect that throw. Try to aim for the middle of your body like in Mill's Mess. One, two. The inverse of that is that people will throw that ball too straight up, which makes the pattern really hard to maintain. If you don't curve that green ball in enough, you end up chasing the pattern around and it's hard to do. Pretty much with every throw you do in Burke's Barrage, it should be like Mill's Mess. With the underhand, we wanna start from our shoulder and come into the middle of our body. It's not a lot, but then with the outside throw, we wanna also come to the middle of our body. Some people do throw that underhand throw more straight up. I don't think it's actually wrong. I just don't personally think it's as good looking, but that one's less important. If you throw that underhand throw straight up, it's not gonna be that hard to maintain. But if you throw this outside throw straight up, it's gonna be pretty hard. So try, especially with that outside throw, to bring it into the middle of your body. This is a pretty obvious one and I already mentioned it earlier. A lot of people when they do Burke's Barrage, they'll essentially do takeouts where the ball's going on top and they say that they're doing Burke's Barrage. They're not, you're not, don't do that. That's a different trick. The last mistake that I see quite often is that people will do two underhand throws. So essentially they'll go one, two, like this. So that green ball, you notice how that green ball is going as an underhand throw on the inside of the other ball. That's not how Burke's Barrage is supposed to go. That would technically be a variation. There's nothing wrong with learning that, but it is not technically Burke's Barrage. If you wanna do Burke's Barrage, you have to go under, outside, not under, under. So if you find yourself throwing one, two, and two is on the inside, you're not doing Burke's Barrage correctly. One, two. The last thing I want to mention is that if you watch Ken Burke do this trick, he tends to almost claw that ball instead of swipe it. He'll claw it down, kind of do more of a this motion instead of this infinity motion that I do. So he's like, he's doing more of a, a downward swipe instead of a sideways swipe. I honestly find that a little bit harder. I don't think it looks as good. So that's why I teach you with the side swipe. I think it's easier to learn that way. But if for some reason you wanna do it the pure way that he discovered when he came up with it, you might wanna try to do that swipe more in a downward motion and make the pattern more like a circle instead of Mills messy. Again, I think it's a pretty subtle stylistic difference, but I thought I'd mention it just so you know. Which brings me to stylistic variations. There are some fun ways to just change up the look of Burke's Barrage. I cover those in the extended version of this tutorial for my patrons. It's only $2. You get access to that extended tutorial, plus all of my other extended tutorials, and it just helps me out a lot. Well, that's all I have on how to do Burke's Barrage. I hope this helped. It's a hard trick to wrap your head around if you're just getting started on it, but take your time, break it down step by step, and be patient with yourself. Eventually this trick will be really easy for you. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. So I spent three hours filming this tutorial the other day, uh, but the audio was all messed up. You're going underneath the ball as you're going. So that's great. So now we're gonna see if it's still messed up now. Um, because it can't be. So test, 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 if I'm moving around, hopefully it's just not nearly as bad. <laughs> Let's see.